Did Odin, the king of the Norse gods, give permission to worship Jesus Christ to the people of medieval Norway and Sweden? Years ago, I visited the House of Norway in San Diego, California, where a man showed me a poster of an old church in Norway which he said included dragon heads at the corners of the roofs because the people needed Odin's permission to worship the Christian god. Is this story true? Let's take a look. As the Scandinavian countries converted to Christianity around the 10th century, a curious new type of building emerged all over Norway. These were the magnificent old stave churches, so called because their walls consist of vertical tree trunks split in two. While the old wooden churches throughout Europe, and to a large extent in the other Nordic countries as well, had long been replaced by stone churches, Norwegians continued to build in wood, and continued as well to build in the centuries-old stave technique. A stave church could not be built just anywhere. It demanded a high and open location, one that nature itself had prepared, conspicuous and prominent. From the exterior, the form of a tree is reflected in the roof's shingling. The columns, planks, and supports were dovetailed, pegged and wedged, never nailed or glued. The worshipper was immediately struck by an aura of mysticism as soon as he entered the church, an intense odor of wood and tar, wool and fur blended with the incense and wafted upwards to the roof beams. The extensive use of quadrant brackets used at all levels and in all planes, as in the roof, suggest an inverted Viking ship. Brackets are certainly to be found in the Viking longships, just as we find ribs in present-day boat design. Most Catholic churches in France or Germany avoided using specifically pagan motifs as part of their decorations. Not so with the stave churches. Dating in some cases to within the first century of Norwegian Christianity, they express a fascinating blend of the Christian and the lingering pagan. Their towering structures loom skyward with dragon's heads perched on the roof, reflecting the strength and awe-inspiring power of the Vikings' seafaring past. The church at Borgund in Norway is a fine example. The roof is often broken up into several roofs at different levels, steeply pitched, lofty, and culminate in tiny spires. Most distinctive of all are the finials on the gable tops, which are dragon heads similar to the prows of their ships. The dragon heads, with their outstretched tongues, sneered from the gable edges as graphic representations of evil paying lip service to the good. These pagan motifs snapped aggressively at their foes, for they knew that no one understood the wiles of evil better than those who had formerly been members of the same team. The towering Borgund church counterpoints its serried pinnacles with Christian crosses and fearsome dragon heads, to make doubly sure that the old gods were kept at bay no less than the biblical devil. The Viking longships, owned by kings and chieftains, often had a head from a mythological animal in the bow. It offered protection from sea monsters and men, bad weather and raids along the voyages. Traditionally, it was not mounted until just before departure, and was not supposed to be mounted in waters near home, in fear of scaring off friendly magical creatures on land. Which, of course, they got wrong two times in the 1958 Kirk Douglas film, The Vikings. The usual Norse word for a dragon, drekki, is often conflated in the sources with another word, ormir, literally worm, and dragons often appear to be little more than mighty serpents. Flying dragons are mentioned in several sagas, but more usually, the dragon is wingless and crawls. The most celebrated dragons of northern myth and legend are undoubtedly that slain by Sigurd, and that slain by Beowulf himself. The 13th century Icelander Snorri Sturluson also attributes the killing of a mighty dragon to the god Thor in what is probably a euhemerized allusion to Thor's slaying of the Midgard serpent during the apocalyptic events of Ragnarok. So if dragons were meant to scare away enemy spirits, 
and take beatings from Norse heroes, what was their purpose on the roofs of Christian churches? As a place of worship, these churches were messages in wood. Each column and plank was erected in God's honor and in praise of the white Christ who drove Odin and Tor from the valleys and fjords. But the simple truth was, the Scandinavians weren't quite ready to lay aside their pagan past so suddenly. With all this information, we can now ask, were the dragons there to appease Odin, or to keep him at bay? I wonder if what I was told at the House of Norway is just an old tale passed down through the families who used to attend those churches. And it reminds me of the comedian Emo Phillips when he said, I believe that monotheism is a gift from the gods. Dramatic tension is such a feature of Norwegian medieval art, the struggle between the dragon and the cross, a struggle in which two worlds, two ways of life clash. Slowly, much of the old and traditional was forced to give way. Stave churches bear witness to the human need for an aura of light in a world that will always be inhabited by dragons. In part two, we'll take a deeper look at Norway's transition from the old mythology to the new Christianity and how they mixed for centuries. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, online references, and films featured in this video.